Hey guys, welcome back to OK Builds channel. And today we're gonna talk about gear ratio and top speed of your next DIY project. That will include calculating gear ratio and top speed of just basic one stage chain drive systems, chain drive systems with a jack shaft and chain drive systems with a torque converter. So stay tuned for that. As you guys know, gear ratio is really important. At your first test drive, that exciting moment, you don't want to find out that your gear ratio is off. That means you will have to go back and replace sprockets and do all that stuff. And it's just not fun. Trust me, it happened to me. So it's always good to calculate the gear ratio even before you start building your project. That way your test drive is going to go nice and smooth. We're going to talk about gear ratios first and then top speed. Our first setup is just a basic one stage chain drive system. Here's our engine. Let's say it's a Predator 212 engine, a really popular engine with a 10 teeth sprocket. Our chain, wheel and our driven sprocket, a 50 teeth sprocket. So in order to calculate the gear ratio of this setup, we have to divide our driven sprocket by our drive sprocket equals 5 to 1 ratio. That means this setup right here has a 5 to 1 gear ratio. Here we have a setup with a jack shaft. To calculate the gear ratio in this case, we have to find out the gear ratio in this chain link and this chain link as well. So we do it like we did before. We divide the driven sprocket by the drive sprocket. Here we're gonna have 20 divided by 10 gives us a 2 to 1 gear ratio in this chain link. Here we're gonna have a 3 to 1 gear ratio. Now we have to times those two results. This chain link has a 2 to 1 this one has three. So it gives us six to one final ratio. That means this whole setup with the jack shaft has a six to one final gear ratio. Why would you use a jack shaft in your project? First, if you need more gear reduction or like in a go-kart setup, Jack shaft gives you ability to use a smaller sprocket on your rear axle and that means you will gain some ground clearance. Here we have a setup with a torque converter. Most of the 30 series torque converters range in ratio from approximately 3 to 1 initially through about 1 to 1 when fully shifted. So now let's count the gear ratio at the takeoff. That's when the RPMs go up and the belt starts to engage. At that moment, the gear ratio is approximately three to one. So three times two times three equals 18 to one final ratio at the start, at the takeoff. Now let's count the gear ratio when the torque converter is fully shifted. And the gear ratio at that moment is approximately one to one. 1 times 2 times 3 equals 6 to 1 final ratio. And this is a significant difference in numbers here. 18 versus 6. That shows us the benefits of using a torque converter. It gives us a torquey start with a still good top speed. Guys, now since we know the final gear ratio, we can calculate the top speed. And here's our formula. We're going to take Kalman CT200U minibike, for example. RPM with the stock engine without any mods, it's going to churn 3600 RPM. Divided by ratio. Ratio is 10 to 1 times your wheel diameter. It's 19 times pi, that's 3.14, then divided by 12, that's how many inches are in a foot, and then divided by 52, 80, that's how many feet are in a mile, and then times it 60 minutes. So we're gonna end up 
with a 20.33 miles per hour. That's with the stock Kalman CT200U mini bike. Now, let's say we're gonna bypass the governor. By doing that, we're gonna increase our RPMs up to about 4,500. Now, if we do the math, we're gonna end up with 25.42 miles per hour. So with governor bypassing, we're gonna increase our speed from 20 to 25 miles per hour. And by inputting your data into this formula, you're gonna calculate the top speed of your DIY project. And that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.